um okay so i think we don't have uh, we don't have uh, anyone else who has joined uh, so why don't we go ahead and start uh, so uh, so maybe uh, uh, we we can do a quick round of introductions and then uh, and then we can uh, spend a few minutes on how we will uh, how we will go about uh, uh, about the plan the, the sessions for for the book uh, for reading this book um, so, okay, so uh, I'll I'll go first. Uh, is that okay? It's okay with me. Okay, okay. So uh, hi, uh, I'm Lokesh Kamani, um, and uh, I uh, I have been uh, I'm I'm a, a director of data science at Era Technology. Uh, I'm a, 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 I am I've been working I've been in the data science field for uh, for many years. Um, I, I started actually in 2000, uh, I started in, uh, in, in, uh, SQL and data analysis kind of work in 2006, uh, but then, uh, uh, I have not worked, uh, very closely with, uh, ggplot2. So I, I've used it, uh, as and when it has been required, but I have, I never went through, uh, the details of how exactly this grammar is constructed. So I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to understand a bit more. Um, and and I I thought that okay going through this this book might be a, a good idea, and then I, I found this club actually. So I, I found the book club here on our four years community, and that's how uh, I I thought that okay maybe we should uh, uh, start uh, uh, start this and uh, second cohort uh, for this book. Um, I am based out of uh, Pune, uh, India, um, and uh, and yeah I think that's that's it about me. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Roma Femi Oyegele. I'm a Nigerian. I've been using R for the past uh, four and a half years now. Mm -hmm. Doing my MSc study at the University of Ibadan here in R. So that is where I, fell. Uh, I discovered the power of R because I use it a lot for doing my analytical work. But currently, I am a research associate at ITA here in Nigeria. So I believe I'm hoping that uh, reading this book uh, helped me uh, to improve my data visualization skill. Currently, I am facilitating the R4DS uh, Core 7. I'm also co-facilitating the Data Vis R Book Club. I'm also in the Mastering Shiny and Shiny UI, Engineering Shiny UI, Production Shiny App. I've also read a couple of book clubs like Advanced R. But I hope that this book club uh, will help me understand uh, the grammar of graphics in order for me to use it to improve uh, my data visualization skill. Okay. Uh, okay, great, great. Uh, 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 nice meeting you, uh, uh, Olu Wafemi. Olu Waf so, uh, how, how do I pronounce your name? Uh, Olu Wafemi, right? Yes, Olu Wafemi, or just Femi is. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, so nice meeting you. Uh, and actually, I'm I'm new to um, uh, to book clubs or uh, uh, even uh, like uh, facilitating the book clubs, right? So it, it's good that you already have some experience in this. Uh, so probably you will uh, uh, you'll help me when when I'm not uh, doing something correctly. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, let's maybe let's quickly go through so how, uh, maybe first we just go through how how we are uh, like how we are going to meet or uh, how we are going to uh, present right um, and and for today I, I i i didn't create a lot of slides i just added a couple of points from the from the introduction chapter um, and uh, uh, we, we will probably spend some time on uh, uh, on on the chapter itself towards the end but majority of the time i think we, we can spend today on um, on uh, organizing for uh, for the next next few weeks right in fact this is this is a pretty uh, a large book right so there are about 22 weeks of uh, uh, 22 weeks of uh, uh, sessions right so uh, let me share my screen and in fact it, is it okay if i also switch off my camera it's okay. It's okay with me. Okay. Okay, great. So I'll, I'll just switch it off and I'll share my screen. 
Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Okay, so uh, so this is the actual book, uh, right? The the main page for the actual book. Now remember that this is a third edition, and it is still in. Uh, it is still not uh, completely. It's, it's still work uh, like it's it's still in progress, right? So if you look at this, uh, uh, I, I believe there are. So I actually checked the second edition and I tried to compare it. So at least in the first few chapters, th there don't seem to be very big differences. Now, there are some differences later on, but uh, at least for now, this should not stop us from uh, uh, going forward with with the third edition that is already available. Um, right? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So, and then let's coming back, to, coming to this, uh, the, the, the notes, right? So there is already notes from cohort one. And then John mentioned that uh, uh, he wants, uh, he, he would like uh, us to revise these notes if possible, right? And then there are, there are notes for all notes as well as videos for all these chapters, right? So if you go through all of this, there are meeting videos and then there are some notes, right? But then uh, he mentioned that we, we could probably improve these notes. So as we go through with the course, right, we, uh, we can probably uh, edit these and uh, and improve the uh, improve the notes that are already available. Um, now, I have uh, one uh, problem here is that I have not uh, worked in uh, book down uh, 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 like i have not used this uh, like i have not uh, uh, worked with books in, in this way right so usually I, I even slides i've i only use uh, uh, either google slides or or i use uh, microsoft uh, uh, powerpoint right so for this one i'll i have a bit of a learning curve and after this first meeting i'm going to meet john and uh, uh, learn, understand a bit more about this so that I can I can take ownership of uh, of making uh, these changes right um, but ha have you had any experience in in doing this uh, with yes uh, yes I think uh, what you need to uh, to do before you can claim ownership of this is that you need to set up your gits and github so then once that has been set up I think there is this slide there is supposed to be a slide for that in this same page then you look at the code section there in this page we are looking at if you click on that code uh yes the green button the code there is a code there after they go to file no at the top at the top uh -huh. at the top i think there is a no 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 at the top there is a where they are c o d e code Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no, yes, so, so, okay, okay. So actually, if you click on it. You can clone this report, this old book, to your own local machine. Yes, yes, yes. In in fact, that part. So Git. Uh, so I, I I know Git and GitHub, right? So I've already done that, right? I've cloned the repository, um, and I've uh, uh, like I, I have a local Git setup also, right? So that that is not a problem. But then, for example, how to make changes to one of these chapters, right? So for example, if I want to make changes. Now I already have R Studio here. Uh, just give me a second. So and let me see where I am. So I'm I'm here, right? And uh, let's uh, let's say um, let's say I just want to open uh, this book, right? Um, let's say I want to just edit this chapter, right? So how yes. how do I edit uh, how do I edit a specific chapter? So I'll, I'll see something like this in in the R Studio, right? Yes, uh, uh, I think for you to edit, you need to go back to R Studio. To okay. The book. You need to open the book in R Studio. Okay. Okay. So I need to open the book Which, in R. Yes, the projects. Okay. So I'm here. Okay. Okay, so here, how do I open that? Uh, uh, it's a project book club, ggplot2 GG book. I can't see it. Uh, okay, this is the art profile file, so. Okay, so uh, anyway, I mean, I so the, that is not a problem, I said, right? Because I have not worked with uh, uh, worked with the 
I can uh, also show you my own version. I think I cloned the book. Let me open that. So like, I think this is the first chapter introduction. So when we have this, uh, we can just remove any of these and put your own learning objective. This is my first learning objective. Then the first slide, we can just remove this and put the introduction to the slide. Then at the end, once I'm done with this, uh, I need, since I normally use, use this, so I can just say use this uh, PR, PR in it to set up a new branch because we cannot push to the same branch in which John set up. So I can just create a new branch, call it chapter one. Okay, but you use, uh, so when you, so you use the same repo uh, or did you clone, uh, did you fork the repo and then use the fork? No, this is the repo you were looking at that John uh, push. This is, I have cloned the repo. This is the book, book okay, plot, this is, uh, ggplot2. Okay, and you so, did not fork you, you did not fork your repo, right? So you, you are just I, using... I, no, I forked the repo, I forked the repo. These okay. are all the files that are on GitHub. So I'll just make changes to the slide. I create uh, a new, I create a new branch because I, I cannot push to the same branch in which John set up. The branch in which John set up, the branch is named, is called main. Right. Yeah, yeah, uh, I got it. So because you'll have to create I a can't, because Yes, I can't push. So that is why I, that is why I use, use this, which is a, tool I normally use, I call that branch chapter one. So I'll push all these files in which I've made changes to chapter one. So it's for John to accept it. It will, it will not merge it back to the main branch. Then I'll end the pull request. Okay, okay. So we will make any changes that we want here. Yes. Uh, and we will send a pull request to John. And yes. Then John, John will review the pull request and then he will merge. Uh, he'll merge the pull request and and that's yes. how it will be published there. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. So so yeah, I have to uh, I have to spend uh, I have to do some learning on 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 doing this. Uh. Right. So uh, probably uh, the by the time when we meet next, uh, uh, I should I should become much better at this. Okay. Uh, there is no problem. Okay. Okay, so thanks, thanks for uh, helping out on that. Now let's uh, let's maybe uh, so should we? Um, as, so okay, now uh, about the how how to uh, run these meetings, right? So we already have a fixed schedule, right? And in fact, let me let me go to the schedule. So we have uh, we have the schedule here, right? So. Right. And uh, so every week we are going to meet until uh, until we have uh, un uh, until the end of August. Right. And and we have already put some names here. So uh, so probably we, we should at least ensure that we have uh, we have a presenter for the next couple of sessions. And then uh, uh, if, if we do not. So, for example, if you meet on 20th and if there is no one who has already uh, 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 put their name for the next session. Then, uh, by default, I'll I'll take that up, right? Um, yes. And then that is how we'll go about each of these sessions. Um, and uh, now, how to do a particular session itself, right? So one is about about taking these notes and then uh, like uh, having notes for each chapter uh, ready before the call. Um, and then, uh, like going through those notes and then correcting as we go through the call, right? If, if somebody wants to, or maybe after the call. So uh, usually how do you do that? So, uh, who, like, the, is there just one person who takes care of uh, editing or, and merging these changes, or is it that, okay, whoever is the presenter, they will, uh, ensure that they, they are uh, taking the notes and they are, they are doing all their merges. Like they're, they're saying is the presenter that will edit all the notes, then he create a pull request, then John is going to match the pull request back to the repo. 
got it got it so okay so it then it's not it's not uh, just the uh, responsibility of uh, uh, of the facilitator to uh, to send this pull request right so everyone who presents will send pull request to john directly right yes okay okay perfect perfect uh, fine so so yeah uh, we will uh, go as per the session right and and we uh, i mean even if we are uh, uh, so uh, like we will try to stick to the schedule right so even if there are less people uh, uh, we should still go ahead with with this schedule and and uh, like try to uh, uh, to postpone or cancel only if if it's uh, like if, if actually nobody can make make it right <laughs> only then we can uh, postpone otherwise uh, you are okay with sticking to this schedule right no me i'm okay with anything if we if there is if we have a tight schedule for that week i think we can postpone the meeting mm -hmm. for that week okay uh Okay, great, great. And how, uh, so with ggplot2 itself, how, uh, uh, have you already gone through some parts of this book or like, or how, how comfortable are you with uh, ggplot2 already? Let's say for, I have, I've been working, I work with ggplot2 almost uh, every day. So I okay. think I am comfortable with it. Okay, okay, okay. Great, great. Um, okay, cool, cool. Um, so fine so should we um, so so the the way we will do this is that uh, the presenter will prepare uh, uh, in advance for every week and they'll send the pull request and then uh, if if let's say if somebody wants to make any corrections for example i uh, so at least for today i don't have any slides but let's say i create some uh, a couple of slides here uh, then uh, should we uh, uh, should just one person sh so should only the presenter uh, uh, change that or should we like should we share it for review be, between our between the group and then send a final re request like uh, or, or or maybe during the call we take some uh, uh, feedback and and then uh, ed, do another edit after the call right so um, probably that's how yeah yes yes but I, I think also what we normally do at times we some presenter they normally use the book itself the original book so there okay. are different way of presenting. I think you can also use the book to present if you are comfortable with presenting with the book. So maybe mm -hmm. during the discussion process, each and every member in that same call, they contribute. Everybody make a contribution. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. Okay. Uh, okay, and, and then usually in these kind of sessions then, uh, 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 so presenter will present for maybe so how in in your in your previous experience uh, uh, how like how does uh, so does the presenter present for the first 30 minutes and then everybody talks or is it like more of interactive from the beginning uh, from my experience it's always like interactive from the beginning because okay. someone can jump in at any point uh, maybe to ask question to also contribute towards to the discussion okay okay got it got it so maybe yeah let's we, we can also follow the same yes uh, okay uh fine so maybe uh we can uh, start going through some of the main points from the first chapter right so uh okay so uh, so if we if we look at uh uh, and you've all you you've also gone through the first uh, first chapter, right? Yes, yes, I've gone through it. Okay, okay. So, so, so yeah. So, uh, ggplot2 is uh, a package R package for producing statistical and data graphics, uh, and and yeah, it's 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 based on the grammar of graphics. So, so what. So what I got from here is that okay. So there are two kinds of tools that you can uh, you can use for uh, for uh, graphics, right? Um, one is tools that make it easy to plot uh, out of the box plots, right? Uh, which gives you a lot of uh, lot of options to plot different uh, to have different plots uh, without uh, typing in some uh, things. And then there there will be tools that 
uh, let you build things using small components, right? So for example, the, the Unix pipe approach, right? Where you have five different things that work really well, and then you, you can build on one on top of each other, right? So, so basically you, uh, ggplot2 is designed to work iteratively, right? So, uh, you you start with the uh, uh, with with your raw data and then and then you you keep uh, adding layers uh, on on top of that. Um, so uh, like like what what is what is your uh, understanding of uh, of ggplot two? Uh, okay, my own understanding of ggplot two is that uh, first of all, uh, ggplot two we all know normally starts uh, with the ggplot function and the ggplot function is going to just create a gray background in our console which the plotting window then first of the next thing is for us to within the ggplot function we pass in our data that we want to use for our visualization then the next step is for us to go into a static mapping where we are going to tell ggplot i want you to map this uh, variable to the x-axis map this variable that can be found in the data to the y-axis. There are some other aesthetic properties like the size, the shape, uh, also the color, the feel. Then the next thing is for us to tell ggplot the type of visualization uh, that we want to create, which is, is it a scatter plot, which is going to be the geometries, which is points, lines, and polygons, because those are the three basics for ggplot too, which is the data, the aesthetics and the geometry, but there are other layers which is like the scale, the statistics, the coordinates, and the theming, which we can also add up. But that those three layers, which is the data, the aesthetics, and the geometry, they are the three important basics uh, to create any visualization using ggplot two. Okay, great, great. Uh, uh so so yes so so data and and then the how uh, like the 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 mapping of the data to aesthetics right so the, i believe yes. that that's the main uh, uh that that's what they've uh, explained here and then these are all the different components of of mapping right uh so eventually how you convert your data into your into your uh into the final uh, visualization uh, so statistics is for uh, for all the statistical transformations, right? So for example, things like binning and uh, um, uh, like any any kind of transformations that. So if you are not plotting the data directly, right? So if you go to the top here, they it's mentioned that uh, it's either statistical graphics or data graphics. So I believe by by data graphics, what is meant here is if if you are plotting something directly on top of the data and not doing any kind of statistical transformations uh is 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 that your under, like is that your understanding also like what's the difference between uh, this yeah for my own understanding is that uh like looking at the ggplot to so those three important uh, layers i talk about the data the aesthetics and the geometry because looking at each geometry each geometry they, they have already set a default statistics uh for each each geometry, it has its own default statistics. Um, but uh, during the course of visualization, we can override any statistics. Just take, for example, the box plot. Uh, the default statistics uh, for the box plot is the start uh, box plot. Is the start box plot. Why for the bar plot, uh, the default statistics is start count, which is going to use uh, the count. It's going to count each for each of those categories. It's going to look at the count, then it's going to plot the count uh, in the y-axis. That is, if you are using the Jumba function in ggplot2. So the default statistics is going to be start count, which is what uh, ggplot2 is using. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, and so, so then, what, what, what would the meaning of this be, right? Like. When then they say data graphics, right? Uh, statistical graphics and data graphics. So, like, what is data graphics? Uh, data graphics. I think uh, just data graphics. Maybe for my own understanding, maybe we are linking. We want to like visualizing our data to know the pattern in which that we can find with the data we are working at hand. Like statistical producing statistical or data graphics. 
graphics. So statistical graph data gra statistical in the sense that every graphics there is always statistics involved in any graphics because without statistics we can't do any visualization because that thing statistic is is embedded in every visualization we create. Yeah, exactly. But then I, I was wondering why like those two things have been mentioned like differently, right? Um, so I, I don't know. Maybe maybe what they mean is data graphics is something where you do not use any uh, like where you just plot the data as is, right? Without without any statistical transformations, right? Uh, uh, or uh, yeah, I, I, I like yeah, I, I like I can't understand this. Like why they are do two different things, right? Um, okay. Um, so, uh, coming back to the points, right? Coming back to the five uh, elements. So here, so <clears throat> so layer is a collection which uses uh, like geometric elements and then statistical transformations, right? And then these are like these are all the additional uh, uh, additional. Uh, uh, elements or additional components that you want to use to enhance your uh, graphics, right? So, but but then at the bare minimum is like, for example, you don't need a face set for everything, right? You don't you don't need a theme for everything, right? Uh, so these are all additional uh, components that help you uh, uh, like uh, either map the data or or like add add more components to your uh, uh like add, add add more to your visualization but they they are not mandatory right the all that you actually need is the data the joms and the stats right yes okay um cool so then uh what what else do we want to go through in this chapter um so uh, maybe a bit more on the grammar of graphics so have you already read about uh, like i was going through this and then there are uh, uh, I, I found that there were some papers uh, on this right so if, uh, if for example if you look at uh, look at this one right um, uh, leland uh, so this is the original paper by uh, by leland wilkinson on the grammar of graphics and then there is another one by uh, Hadley Wickham, uh, which is on, which is this one. So uh, I like, uh, have you already gone through uh, these papers? Um, I have not gone through, but I've read it before. I've read the paper before. Okay. Okay. You've all, okay. You, you've read the paper before. Okay. Uh, okay, great. So yeah, uh, what I plan to do is here in the notes, right? I'll I'll add the references, right? So when I'm when I, I'll send the notes for you to you for uh, uh, for review at at least for this one, right? Uh, you can also yes. post it in the chat. The link you can post the link in the chat. We can assess it. Okay, okay. Because I I was not sure about at least the, this one, right? Because this this is. Uh, uh, academia right but i don't know whether uh, this will be uh, uh, I, this is a legit site right you 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 can uh, go through the site and you can you can download all these papers but i am not sure whether this is uh, publishable or not like this this is obviously this is this is a uh, like a free you can see this in a uh, this is freely available everywhere right but then this is only available through academia so I, I like I, yeah maybe I we need to confirm before we can uh, we can add those links here, um, and and what what else is there in then uh, chapter one uh, like what 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 more points do you do do we want to discuss? I think uh, Lucio is here. I think. Uh, it's... Hey, hi, Lucio. Hello, hello. Hey, uh, hi, Lucio. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, sorry for joining late. I, I saw that the meeting started. Well, would have started two hours from now. So I, I realized that the meeting was on right now. Okay. okay. No, no, no problem. No problem at all. 
uh, actually we we just uh, we, like we had a quick introduction and then uh, we were uh, planning like how to go about the sessions and then i was also uh, i was also telling uh, uh, all of that uh, like i am new to this in fact i was not aware that you have to be already experienced to to actually uh, apply for this and then there was some miscommunication so uh, I was trying to learn a bit more about uh, how to facilitate the whole uh, cohort. Uh, uh, but you really have to be experienced at least in the content of the book. For example, there are some other book clubs that I am facilitating, and I am also like a new learner for the content. So in that sense, you you are fine. You feel that that was the case for you. Okay. Uh, okay. No. So I'm I'm actually new to uh, like the book reading club also. So uh, this like I wanted to. Uh, so uh, we we didn't have a, a introduction, but I so I've been in the data uh, field for for many years, but then I've uh, I've never uh, um, uh, like participated or like done a book club. I I read a lot of books, but I have not participated in a book club as, until now. That's uh, that's why. Uh, um, okay. So. Uh, so do do we want to uh, like uh, what so what, what's your background in so you've also been working in ggplot2 for uh, for a long uh, uh, for many years uh when i only started learning r two years ago so mm -hmm. i think i only have like one year of experience with ggplot but i never got like quite into it so i, I wanted this book lab to be the opportunity to really learn and the capabilities of this package. Okay, okay. Um, great, great. So, so yeah, yeah. See, same. So, so on on my end also, I uh, I've been using this uh, like for, uh, and I, I don't use R much. I use Python more. But within R, whenever uh, we need some plots, and then it's not available with the basic uh, like uh, basic uh, options available, then then I use ggplot. But I but I haven't used it like too much like i i i i've used it uh, when required uh, when i couldn't plot something easily uh, in in the base package but but other than that i haven't used it much so so this book is like going to be really uh, very useful for uh, for me to to get into the um, to understand the theory behind the grammar of graphics and then to use it practically also um okay so so, so we already spent uh, like some time about uh, on on uh, on on how to edit the notes and how to go about the sessions and so on. So, uh, like how, uh, anything that you like you want to talk about or like um, any any tips that you have for uh, for running these sessions. Well, I I did have one question. Uh, for example, when I was trying to to locally run the, the book of the slides of this book club. So that would be, uh, the book is narrated by the previous cohort. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, my, the, my, my computer is pretty slow, so I it didn't even get to finish a computation for the first chapter. So in, in that sense, if one were to present, uh, like do we just use, well, try to, render the whole book in my case it didn't work or can I just like share an empty book but show the notes for the chapter and then just simply push uh, and make that the rendering process happen first and, and not in my machine uh, probably we can just do it for each chapter right yeah uh, if we don't need to render the whole book uh, so for for one chapter we can only uh render uh, that part right uh, that should work right uh when i tried it didn't work but if i can present like only one chapter and as you mentioned not show the other part of the book then mm -hmm. i think it would work that way yeah in fact in the channel also john mentioned that uh, it was taking a huge time to uh, to render uh, Right. Uh, he mentioned some some problem with building this uh, with the whole book from source. Uh, so so yeah, maybe we can we can check with him. Mm. No. Okay. 
so uh, so uh, so for the uh, so we were going through this also and we already have uh, uh, both of you uh, have uh, nominated yourself for the second and third chapter um, right and and i'll i'll put probably my name here and here so uh, because this will give me at least some experience of uh, uh, of of uh, presenting also um, right uh, and and then uh, what we agreed on is that okay for any week if uh, if there is no so for example in in any week in this week if i don't see if we don't see anyone who is nominated here then by default i i will pick up all those uh, all those weeks right Where, wherever there is no nomination uh, at least a week before then i'll pick pick that up Uh, do you know how many people have signed up for, for this specific cohort? I I think there were four, uh, three or four. So I, I I'm not sure if there was one more, but I can check with John. I I haven't uh, I haven't spoken with him, so I, I like I don't know whether it's uh, it's one more person there. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so to, to, what I plan to do, so, so in fact, I was uh, just talking about this also, that I'm, uh, I'm new to book down also, so I'm, I'm what I'm going to do is uh, create some slides uh, on, uh, create maybe a couple of slides and then uh, put it on the channel and then if it makes sense, then I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll merge them in, in, in the book, uh, right? Um, and uh, and yeah i i think uh, that's it right and then we can we can meet like we can uh, continuously chat whenever uh, required on the channel and then we'll we can meet uh, in the following week so uh, so what what else like should we uh, should we go through this uh, like we we have already gone through uh, uh, gone through some some of the points in the in the first chapter um, so so should we continue or like should we should we conclude the first session? Yes, we should continue. I think we should continue. Yeah, I, I arrived late. Uh, were you? Uh, at what part of the notes? Mm -hmm. So uh, sorry, uh, uh, because I arrived late. Mm -hmm. I am asking uh, <coughs> at which part of the notes in this chapter were you were you on? So we were actually talking about uh, about the the components of mapping. So about okay. these five components of mapping, right? Um, and uh, the yeah, I, we, we were at this point. And yeah, so should should we should we continue here then? Uh, okay. Okay, so so at least so so about the mapping components, uh, uh, you, I, you you've also gone through it, right, uh, Luciano? And uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and, and like anything that you want to add in uh, in the definition itself or in the in the components of mapping, like anything special that that you want to highlight on on this uh, point on these points. Mm, no, not really. Okay. Uh, okay. Then uh, and so so here they have they have mentioned about this and then. What the grammar doesn't do. So uh, obviously, the grammar is more about uh, uh, how to do anything, right? But which graphics to use when? Uh, obviously, that that's not decided by the by the grammar. And then secondly, uh, it doesn't describe the interactive uh, graphics, right? So so here we are all concerned only with the uh, with the static ones. And then for interactive, I believe we can like there is there are things like this one, and then there is ggviz and so on, right? Um, now, in this section, uh, they have mentioned about uh, how uh, ggplot fits in with uh, with other R graphics. 
right and then base then then the grid graphics lattice and and so on right um so have you have you guys had any experience with any of these uh, like i i use i i i from these I, i've used mainly base graphics um so do, do you have any and yeah and lattice sometimes so do you also have some experience in these Uh, well, I I worked a little bit with base graphics, uh, mm -hmm. also uh, with Matplotlib for Python, uh, but not so much for ggplot. I, I I also shared in the chat a link uh, for a part that was mentioned above about a possible interactive no possible enhancement of interactivity for the graphics uh, because. They mentioned, for example, some JavaScript libraries like Plotly, uh, but I recently heard about this package, I think it's called Giraffe, where you can make your G, your ggplot object interactive, but at, at least in a, in a way that seems more natural or more coherent with the ggplot language, instead of just, for example, passing it to, uh, passing your ggplot objects through the, the plotly function in order for plotly to take care of the interactivity so that our package is why it's quite interesting i did like it okay great great uh what's what's the name again uh i'll, I'll just add a note here yeah, well it says gg giraffe but i don't know if it's pronounced giraffe like, like the actual animal Okay, okay. You you mean this, right? Okay. Uh, well, it's let's see, it's in the chat. The era. Okay, it's in the in the Slack chat. Uh, I don't know in the Zoom meeting chat. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so this is this is the library. Okay. Okay, G, G, and okay, this one is plot nine. This is for what? Plot nine is. Okay, okay, for Python, right? G, yeah, grammar of graphics for Python, yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, great. And and then so so typically when when do you guys use uh, like different kinds of graphics? So for example, when do you choose to go with ggplot2 versus any of any of these other other ones? Well, I tend to use only ggplot when I am already like in the final stage of, of working with some data set. Uh, because, I mean, it's just in our, um, at, at least in my computer, it's, it's really slow. So if I am doing just like some exploratory analysis, then I prefer to use Matplotlib only in the last part to make it, sorry, to produce more like appealing graphics. And, and that's when I use ggplot. Okay, okay. So uh, I mean I uh, I believe that the main advantage of ggplot2 is uh, that uh, uh, the the fine grain control right you can you can uh, you can control each and everything because uh, because like you can build it on top of like you can do iterations right you you can gradually add any components or modify any components as you go on so uh, so that's why you can you can create even very complex graphics uh, if uh, if if you have probably if you get more uh, expertise then um, you can uh, whatever is the the other ones would have limitations because uh, you you cannot uh, combine they, they don't give you all the rich different rich components that are uh, provided by ggplot2 so um, so maybe where you want to do something quick and dirty, you can probably go with base graphics. But then where you want more control, then you go with ggplot2. Uh, right? I, I think that's that's how at least I think about it. Um, 
okay and plotly i think plotly is also a very common one here um okay so so yeah like yeah it's like it's this just mentions about all these different kinds of graphics um uh, and uh, and yeah that's it okay so this section describes about uh, about all the uh, uh, all, all the different uh, chapters in the book right so uh, 3 and 9 uh, like 3 to 9 is uh, about mainly using the basic toolbox and then 10 to 12 is about uh, uh, like the the most important like scales right and uh, and uh, this is like more about uh, like the the uh, theory of uh, uh, layered grammar and uh, yeah so yeah quite quite a quite a long book um and, and then uh, prerequisites so yeah obviously all of us uh, so you you're using the latest version of r right um so the latest version of r in r studio and then uh, we can we can install everything uh, together uh, in the beginning so that we don't uh, uh, get issues uh, further on Okay, and, and are you guys all already on these uh, groups on the ggplot group or uh, uh, like stack overflow for gg uh, ggplot do you mean that there is a specific stack overflow group for the yes you yeah, see so here uh, uh, yeah, no, so for ggplot2, there is a separate group, right? Oh, Google. There's a special uh, Google group for uh, a mailing list for ggplot2. Right. So yeah, uh, probably we can uh, sign up here also. Um, and then, okay, there are some R cheat sheets for ggplot2 also available. Okay, I was not aware of this. Um, okay, uh, yeah, I don't think there's much else in the first chapter itself. Yeah, I think we covered uh, pretty much uh, all the necessary parts. Okay. Um, okay, then. Uh, so the, the next action item is for me to add, uh, create those, uh, like modify the notes for first section, uh, for the first chapter. And then we can meet uh, next week. Uh, is is that okay? Is it okay to conclude the first session today? Uh, okay, I, I agree. Okay. Uh, uh, all of them, any anything else that you want to discuss? Uh, for me, it's okay, but the next session in which uh what is the plan should we also as we are preparing the notes should we also go deep into the like the exercise so that as we are discussing which can also work along and treat the exercises also okay so from my perspective uh, uh, I, I think uh, going through 
a demo right like uh, 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 not not all examples but maybe at least a, a one or a couple of examples uh, while we go read the book i think that uh, like the the implementation it's, uh, itself right uh, i think that could be useful um, and notes uh, like preparing so what was the second question about you asked something about notes right no it's about as I'm preparing my notes. Uh, also, I think I should, we have to also touch the exercise so that we can discuss based on those exercises. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it makes sense to pick up just a couple of a couple of the examples from exercises. Uh, Lucy, what, what what do you what do you think? Uh, yeah, I also I also think that it would be perhaps most convenient to uh, to focus in, in the exercises because if we do like the previous cohort where well, they seem to have executed almost verbatim the, the code of the book, then may, maybe in the end of the book lab, uh, we will get to a similar point as we are right now that for Rendering the whole book, it takes too much time. So maybe if we do like uh, he's proposing and just focusing on the exercises, we can reduce a little bit of the rendering load. Okay, but exercise. So let's say if we do uh, some exercises here, right, in the calls, we don't need to put or uh, put those into like we we don't really need to add code into the notes, right? If you are doing a demo or if we are going writing like um, executing something right uh, so some code that doesn't need to go into the notes correct yeah. or or do you do you think we should add code also into the notes um, I think maybe add the code but not execute it because it seems to to take a while for the plot to well to to run so maybe just add the code not run it but when one is presenting uh, like just yeah, run the code like copy paste it and run it locally yeah yeah makes sense okay uh anything else On my end, no, there is not any. Okay. Uh, okay, then great. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, Lucio. Thank you, all of me. Uh, it was great speaking with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, bye, everyone. See you next week. Thanks. Thank okay, you. Bye. bye.